Yo, what's up guys, Sam Cole here. Welcome back to another video. And in my hand right now is iOS 16. You can already see the crazy new lock screen with complications and fonts. I'm gonna give you guys a preview of what's to come. So many new things to talk about in iOS 16. So if you're excited, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more, and let's take a look at everything new in iOS 16. All right guys, so let's start off with the lock screen here. As you can see, you can now press and hold to enter this new customization view. And if you tap this button down here, it's it's just like the Apple Watch where you can mess with pretty much everything. Tap up at the top where the date is to change it out with whatever you like. Same with the time below. Don't want it to look like that? Hey, let's make the letters look like this or like that. You've got all of these different fonts and styles. And what about colors? Yeah, you can make this any color, any shade, any hue that you want on your lock screen. The customization, of course, though, wouldn't be complete without new widgets on your lock screen. Just like Apple added to the home screen a few years ago, you've now got new stuff like the home climate, all of these different options here. You can go down to news and get a nice news widget to just see a snippet of what's happening. Probably most useful is weather. You can now see the weather temperature from the lock screen. I think this has been in every iOS concept as long as I've been alive. And guys, now stock on iOS 16. Look at my, look at this. It's my lock screen with the temperature. But it's not just customizing the lock screen that's new. It's that your notifications now float in from the bottom down here. Now, I'm not proud to say that I've gotten a notification from a dating app. But I am proud to say that this is a new feature in iOS 16 that it comes up at the bottom. Nothing too crazy about the functionality of notifications is different. You can still highlight it or, of course, swipe it over to get rid of it. But it's a really nice way to focus on what's important, like the time and the date and your widgets up top. And then your notifications are at the bottom below. But you know what? I'm actually bored of this lock screen already. So I'm just going to go over here by tapping and holding and then switching to this one and watch this animation when I swipe up. Guys, did you see that? The earth just zoomed because it's not just the lock screen that's new, guys. It's all new dynamic wallpapers, which we can check out by heading over to settings and wallpaper. And you can see it looks quite a bit different. Let's go ahead and tap and add a new wallpaper. There's so much to jump into here from the featured ones up here at the top to weather and astronomy, which have all new animations. Emoji. You guys want to do a cool emoji wallpaper? Just tap done. And when I go back to the home screen, look, I've got a brand new emoji wallpaper pre-made by my phone. Apple has put in so many options and of course some OG stuff as well. How could we forget the iOS 7 bubbles wallpaper that does still live? Of course, all customizable once again with widgets. Just tap and place them and you're good to go. Again, it is insane how easy it is to switch between these lock screens. As you can see, you just press and hold and we've got new stuff right there. And for this one, again, crazy cool animation, a spiral. But Apple didn't stop there because there are also new home screen customization options. Look here down at the bottom. You've got not only the ability to legibility blur, meaning that when you do that, the home screen background will be blurred automatically by your phone. You don't have to do it manually anymore to really make your app stand out. You can also do a simple color gradient that you can configure like so. Look at that. You can change the hue, the tone. I mean, this is customization I never thought I'd see on my iPhone. I mean, just look at the quality of that blur on my home screen. It feels so fresh. Anyway, let's move on to what else is new in iOS 16, which has to continue with the Messages app. It looks the same, right? Apple didn't change anything here. But look a little closer, and maybe I regret sending that message. Maybe I didn't want to say, thanks, man. Well, if you tap and hold here now on iOS 16, there's a few new options. Number one, I can just edit it. I could say, thanks, man, and do like a different emoji. Look, thanks, man. Approve it, and as you can see, it says delivered but edited. Or maybe I didn't mean that at all. Tap and hold again, and you can unsend messages. It's gone. Now, look, it says that they have unsent it, and of course, they might still be able to see it if they're not on iOS 16 like me. But maybe you type a bunch of gibberish. Maybe there's some things you regret saying. You hit the send button, and then you're like, oh, man, I shouldn't be texting right now. Tap and hold undo send and the message is gone guys this is not a prank this is built into iMessage on ios 16 and i believe this is the biggest change to iMessage in history but honestly guys my new favorite feature is the ability to mark messages as unread look at this the number right now is eight of course if you tap on it and then you go back it says you read it it goes back to seven but what if i said oh i actually didn't want to reply yet let me mark that as unread 
just like that and you guys will see the notification badge changes as well mark messages is unread again stock in ios 16. but messages is only one place that we communicate what about the mail app i mean i use this constantly so first of all while it looks the same initially you say okay there's actually nothing new here whatsoever but what if i want to schedule a message rather than replying right now maybe letting the person know that i'm up i can tap and hold and well, I can send it now, or tonight, or tomorrow, or send it even later. I can pick the exact date and time that I want this message to be delivered. I mean, this is the definition of a power user feature. So let's say, let's send it now. You know, I want to just get it out there. Oh, but there's a typo. Okay, sweet. I'll just undo send, and the message is back. And I can say, oh, you know, for real, because I don't want to mess up my very important message to apple okay look at that now again i, uh, I want to send a little later okay now i'm going to send it at 9 p.m tomorrow there you go i have now scheduled a message and also unsent it and then resent it again with ios 16. this stuff is nuts all right now if somehow you're still watching this and you're like i haven't seen anything impressive yet just watch this all right this is a guy right here and i want to turn him into a sticker so i can just tap and hold like so and it says copy or share what i'm going to do is copy this like so i'm going to head back to the messages app and now i can paste it like so but it's not the whole image it's just me yeah in real time my iphone it cropped me out this is zero editing this is literally you saw me do it i'm in the photos app let's do another one right here like so I can copy it, go back to the Messages app, and again, I can paste it in just like that, guys. Again, this is no photo editing. This is on my phone, no computer required. This used to take a third-party image editor, and it is one of the crispiest cuts I've seen. I mean, I don't know how they do this, but it's a full PNG of me. Stop looking, stop objectifying me, though. And while we're in the Messages app, let me show you guys the new dictation. Now, normally it would take over your entire keyboard, right? But now... In case you're wondering why the audio cut out, it's because I uh, can switch between dictation and typing. I mean, is that not crazy? All right, now jumping into maps right here, let's say I wanna go to a few places. First, I wanna go to the Cupertino Crossroads. I don't know what this is, but I know that I wanna go here. So I'm gonna tap on that to direct. Next up, let's go into the Maps app, where I can right here, go ahead and navigate myself like so, but I can also add a stop now. So before I go to Apple Inc., I think I wanna go to Apple Park. and. Before I go to Apple Park, I wanna to go to Wendy's. And before I go to Wendy's, I think I've gotta stop at this amazing Korean barbecue place. As you can see, it has now navigated me to all of these stops and it shows you how long it will take to do all of it. You can just start here, you can share your ETA like always, but it shows you until your next stop. It even gives you an estimated time. So listen, I know Maps has had a rough start, but it's actually gotten insanely good in recent history. Next up, let's head over to the Wallet app. Of course, you've got all your cards in here like normal, but there is a new button for tracking your orders. Apple is automatically, when you make purchases with Apple Pay, going to integrate the tracking and shipping info into Wallet so you can look at it from one place, from here. So you no longer need a third-party app to track anything, you can do it straight from the wallet app. Now, of course, this is an early beta at this point, so it's not fully properly optimized, but when it's working, it's going to be pretty sweet. On top of that, Apple also announced a new feature called Apple Pay Later, which is obviously based around the wallet app too, and I don't think it's working or rolled out just yet, but it'll basically allow you to split any payment into four purchases, and there's no interest or additional fees, so a great way to afford something a little bit earlier than you normally would be able to. Now, if I could give an award to the most improved app on iOS 16, I would definitely give it to the home app here. Not only is everything more consolidated and in one location, I've got a pretty basic smart home setup, but on Apple's website, they show you something much more complicated, much more complex, where you have your individual products on top of scenes and even security cameras just all in one spot. It's just way less segmented than before and makes better sense. Next up, if you own an Apple Watch, you know that the fitness app is nothing new. This has been around forever. But now, even if you don't own an Apple Watch, Apple will include at least the basic move ring for free. So you can track your steps. You can even get recommendations about what to do better to slightly push yourself. Basically, tracking your steps and calories on your iPhone is just really good now. I mean, it was fine before, but now you have specific data, like if you had an Apple Watch. Now, following that, this year, like every year, Apple has announced some big updates to 
CarPlay. But this time, they took things a step further. They said beginning at the end of next year, so still some time away, they are going to have a full car operating system. We're talking every display in the car, your speedometers, your mileage, your main center console. Everything will be fully managed by Apple. And I have to say, the images that they're showing, I mean, this is confirmation of the Apple car. And while those are all the big features in iOS 16, there is so much hidden below the surface. Of course, I've got an iOS 16 hidden features video just around the corner, so subscribe for that in case you haven't already. Guys, iOS 16, what are your thoughts on it? Personally, I am blown away. I think it's incredible. And uh, again, while it kind of looks the same, it's not a major redesign. It just starts happening around. Play with it, and you'll be amazed to see how much is new here, like this new UI and whether per day you can see stuff. And of course, all my WWDC coverage wouldn't be possible without the help of 1Password, who sponsored my trip out here. I mean, if you guys have not used 1Password yet, it is the definitive password manager on your iPhone, iPad, Mac, and more. If you want to make your accounts more secure, then head over to the link down below in the description where there's a special offer for you guys. All right, that's all for now. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.